The purpose of this video is to introduce you to the Arduino Uno and similar microcontroller boards that we're going to use to uh, work through our lessons on making environmental measurements. Now here on the screen right now you see the Arduino Uno R3. This is what most people think of when they think of the Arduino and this is a perfect choice for working through the lessons and we'll use it a lot as we learn to interface this particular unit to various sensors, store data, display data, and uh, do different types of data logging tasks. The heart of the system is the Atmega 328 microprocessor and most of the boards I'm going to show you today have this processor although you'll see it in different forms or form factors. It's pretty large here in the what's called dual inline package or DIP. This is where your program resides, this is where all the calculations are done and this is how you is what interfaces with sensors, outputs results to the screen, etc. Another important component is the USB interface. Here you see the USB jack. Okay, this is a type A jack. So you need a USB cable to work with this Arduino. So this is the cable that has your standard connector on one end and the A connector on the other. You need one of those. The other part is a barrel jack here where you can apply external power. See the barrel jack? Now when you have the system connected to the USB port it can draw power from your computer's port itself. System, most of the examples we can work with without hooking up external power. However, obviously you probably want to deploy this thing where there is not a, a computer and so you can apply power through the USB port. Normally we apply 9 volts. Needs to be at least about 7.5 and, and less than 12. Now the microprocessor itself runs on 5 volts and uses 5 volt logic. So there's a little voltage regulator here that down regulates the 9 volt to 5 volt where it can uh, operate all the components on the system. Another key part of the system is the communications chip here. This is what handles communications between the USB port and the microprocessor. Some chips don't have this interface at all or have a different variety and so that's something to keep in mind. This is a crystal to help control the clock speed in the microprocessor. We also have various other LEDs which you can use to help you see communications or you can turn off and on by, with user control, see various capacitors, resistors, etc. There's also a reset button here. We'll talk about the importance of that and how that can be used. Now one of the most other important areas is the breakout pins or the headers here across both sides of the Arduino. There's a lot of good diagrams online that show you how these are broken out but basically this is what's connecting these pins on the microprocessor out to these headers where you can connect wires, sensors, etc. On one side of the board you'll see lots of digital pins going from 0 to 13. This is where you handle digital inputs and digital outputs. Okay, and we'll talk about the difference between digital and analog later, but that's an important area. It's also analog reference, ground, and some connections up here that you can use to get to your what's called I2C interface, which we'll use quite a bit. On this side, you have the analog input. So if you have a sensor that outputs uh, a voltage, you can read them here with the analog to digital converter that's inside this chip. In this case a 10-bit A to D converter and we'll talk about what that means. Finally along here you see some voltage points, ground, 5 volts and 3.3 volts. And often we have to connect those to draw power to our sensor or do other tasks. So those are sort of the key areas of the Arduino and this form factor or this shape is also often what we associate with an Arduino and many companies make shields. These are other printed circuit boards that plug on top of the Arduino that fit this form factor. Okay, 
and we'll take a look at that. So again, when you think of an Arduino, this is what we normally uh, consider a very good choice for working through the lessons and very ex inexpensive. Now other companies make what's called Arduino compatible boards. The Arduino system is open source, meaning anybody can copy this design if they want to. They should not use the Arduino logos and names, but they're welcome to use the same processor, the same form factor, and that's one of the reasons the community, do-it-yourself community, uh, has really adopted the Arduino is because of this. There's so many products that work with it. So let's look at some other options. Here's one I really like from Adafruit called the Adafruit Metro. So notice it's the same shape, that is it's got the same form factor as the Arduino. Okay. This is the same microprocessor at Mega328 but in a much different package. But any program written on for the Arduino Uno will work on the Metro. Notice the header pins have the exact same layout. They have some really nice labeling on here that I think is easy to see. Same power jack. Has a different USB connection. This is still a USB connection but uses the, the mini connection. Right? A lot of people have those cables around. Same reset button. It uses a different chip for USB microprocessor um, communication. And many people think that this chip is a little bit better than this one for prototyping where you're disconnecting power a lot and reconnecting it to the computer. Also LEDs and most of the same components. Okay, so this is a very another very good choice for uh, working through the lessons. Now, regardless what kind of system that you use or board that you use, you'll also need a breadboard to work through the examples and do your prototyping. This is a breadboard. We'll talk about more how it's interconnected. This is a half-size breadboard here. And some companies like Adafruit and Spark Fun make a little um, base here that you can mount both the Uno and your printed circuit board to, and you've got a really nice prototyping system. So you will need some type of breadboard. That's a half size one. This is a full size one. A really nice choice for a smaller form factor this new board by Adafruit called the Metro Mini. Here's the original Metro. Here's the Metro Mini. And you can see much, much smaller. But again, it still uses the Atmega 328 microprocessor here again in an even smaller package. But any program written on the Uno or Metro will work on the Metro Mini. It has built-in USB it has almost the exact same pinouts. You can see the digital across the top, analog inputs and power, so you similar format of the pins. The Metro Mini is designed to be plugged onto a breadboard and uh, so it has the pins here that can plug onto a breadboard, so it's breadboard friendly. One interesting thing I forgot to mention about both the Metro and the Metro Mini is you can convert them between a 5 volt system and a 3 volt system. That is, use either 5 volt logic or 3 volt logic. We'll talk more about that. But there's a big movement to sort of use more 3 volt or 3.3 volt systems rather than 5. So that's a nice feature. The great thing about the Metro Mini is you can just plug it onto a breadboard and start putting your components on there and you're ready to go. So, also a really good choice for working through the lessons. Metro Mini. There are many other boards that have that similar size. Uh, one of the other ones that I really like is the Adafruit Pro Trinket. Now, let's put the Metro Mini up there. You can see it's just a little bit smaller than the Metro Mini. And um, this also has all the pins 
digital across the top, analog inputs, good shape. The only difference is it does not have a standard USB interface. So to communicate with this chip, with your computer and debug it and get it ready to go, you have to um, use a special cable. It's called an FTDI cable. Here's one here. This end plugs on right here onto the uh, board and this end of course goes to your computer and what you see here in this particular version you can see the USB interface is actually built into the head of the USB cable. Now these USB cables or you can also use what's called a USB adapter they cost you know anywhere between uh, 12 and and seventeen dollars but once you have one of these cables you can communicate with a whole range of chips I'm going to show you some more here in a minute but it's a pretty good investment because uh, it allows you to use these really small chips for your environmental projects especially if you're deploying a whole bunch of these out in the field a really nice thing about the um, Pro Trinket is it comes in both a 5 volt version or a 3 volt version and they only cost about nine or ten dollars so a really good choice and you could actually work all the projects in this class with a Pro Trinket and we'll definitely use it some toward uh, the second half of the uh, lessons. A similar board that I also really like for environmental work is the what's called rocket screen board. They make two versions one that runs mainly it's 5 volt logic and one that has 3 volt logic. This one nice thing about the uh, rocket screen it has a special low power library and um, this allows it to uh, really be conservative with power usage so if you're deploying somewhere where maybe you're trying to run the system for a really long time on a small battery um, Rocket Scream's a great choice, but has, you know, here's the digital pins, analog inputs, still use that Mega 328, really nice chip. I think these retail for about $12, so another nice choice. Even smaller is the Mini Arduino, and uh, this one's made by SparkFun. You can see it's even smaller. It still has that Mega 328, and uh, it, the pin layout is a little bit different. So sometimes not all the pins are exposed or easily accessible. But otherwise, if you have the FTDI cable, you can program this and use it for your projects. And these things, you can buy these for about five dollars. Uh, and this again is the SparkFun manufactured version. Here's these three here: Pro Trinket, Rocket Scream. Arduino Mini and uh, all of these you need, do need the FTDI cable or FTDI adapter but really a good way to go like once you've got your project worked out with something like a full-sized Arduino you've got all your debugging done you know what you know the system works then you can move your programs down to some of these lower cost more compact versions uh, before you take it out to the field the last one I want to show you is this new board from Adafruit called the Feather. And this one happens to be called the Feather Ada Logger. This uses a slightly different processor, but it's very, very similar and is programmed with the Arduino IDE, same language. Your programs almost always transfer over very easily. The cool thing about the Feather is that it has this particular version has an SD card built uh, into it interface. So you know most of our systems were wanting to do data logging that is we want to measure sensors store the data on an SD card with a timestamp. Because this has the SD card reader built in it that makes our work a lot easier and more efficient. It also has a place for a LiPo battery and a built-in LiPo battery charger. So we have power management, disk storage, and our complete Arduino environment on one chip for I believe it's about $21. So I'm really interested in this as a 
really nice way for prototyping and building projects. So again we have quite the family of chips and I've only really scratched the surface of what's out there on the market. We have a lot of these smaller footprint versions and of course the larger form factors like the Metro and the traditional Arduino. So you have a lot of choices as you work through these examples. And there's a lot of other ones on the market. I would recommend that you buy one from a very reputable manufacturer. There's a lot of a lot of knockoffs and things being made uh, that are available on eBay and a lot of the times those work just fine. But it's a little bit more risky and uh, if you're in a, your time is worth a lot and you're and you're learning a new skill, you don't want to be frustrated with some uh, faulty equipment. You want to learn as fast as possible. So if you're a new user, I would buy one from a reputable uh, dealer.